everybody how you all doing i hope everyone is doing good right here today i'm gonna make some short videos about you know some important information i'll pass across you know what i'm saying uh what it is um is last time i was writing this and uh i made some videos about you know how you know these breaks you know normally wear off the break pass in the wear off as much as the qr one as well and how to adjust them i made videos about all of them and you can watch them so if you see my scooter right here you can see that you know the thing right there that you have to you know turn clockwise to push the right hydraulic brake down to push the calipers to kind of adjust your brake uh you know shoes quite tighter to the disc it's all the way in that means that i've even exceeded how much adjustable you can make that and still when you're not holding my brake you can say it's it's not catching anything and last time I'm just going to say that I was a bit lucky. It's, it's got nothing to do about me, you know, being a good school writer or something. I just got lucky. Uh, I was writing this and apparently, you know, approaching the red light. And I hold this school I know it's not stopping. I know they say that this school got electronic braking. And when you hold the brake, uh, the system itself, like, kind of like car the supply with the magnet and electrical current to stop the, the rotor rotating. And then your brake shoes actually help the discs as well. So it's like two braking system in this. But that electronic braking is not going to stop this. this. This is a beast. You see this thing right there? Can run. This is like a small motorbike. When you're on this going and you think that like, my brake shoes are gone by and I'm going to use just like the electronic braking, man. You are getting yourself in a situation where you're going to be like, oosh. You don't want that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So that guy a bit lucky last time, you know. Uh, immediately, I couldn't stop at the traffic light because they just keep moving. Even though I was riding a bit slow, like in about 40 miles per hour or something. And I just went straight through the red light. That's the only way. There's no way I could stop. And what happened is the moment I just passed through the red light, a car just went past. Like, just like, just a, a bit of like two or three seconds, man. I, I was just like, whoa, man. I, I just got lucky. You know what I'm saying? So my message with all of you right there. Is I don't want any of you getting in that kind of situation. So when you say that your brake starts, you know, getting to this level with all the, you know, uh, the hydraulic adjuster being adjusted in, it's time for you to pack the scooter. If you have another scooter, like I have two scooters, you go on the second one. If you don't have any other scooter, man, take a bike, take a train, the tram, the bus, whatever it is that you got in your area and save your life because this thing is not good to ride it without brake. I even tried some method like, you know, when I was riding last time and I knew that my brakes were not good, you know, the brake shoes just worn off completely, they don't catch any of the disc, they don't make any noise. So, uh, when I see, when I'm riding towards the traffic light, which is already green, I start to slow down so that if it change red, by the time I get to the traffic light, I start, you know, changing yellow for me to go through. But then that's gonna annoy other road users. Like got cars, you know, beeping, shouting at me like move all the way. Of course, they got right because I mean they they they've seen I got space in front of me. So why is this guy slowing me on a scooter? And you don't want to be in that situation, you know what I'm saying? So I made myself I got some part order, and this part actually came from QR. Um not not the QR Q1 hammer. I ordered the part for QR Q power. Because what I realized is that the QR Q power. And uh, Ultra G here, they have similarities. I've made some research and I've seen that the brake calipers and all the braking system on this is almost the same as that. And why did I order that from the key one? The reason why I did that was that the company that made this, if you watch some of my videos, the company is based in South Korea. Right. I don't know if they got some issue with the uh, mini motors for some kind of copyright or whatever it is because... Most of the part in this scooter right here is from Mini Motors. The controller, I can guarantee you that the motors here and on the, the other things, some of the part might not come from them, but whoever made this scooter might be somebody that used to work for Mini Motors before, maybe just, you know, break away from them and start to do his own thing, but then uh, it's not. So I tried to order the part, and then uh, the, the, I, got, I got an email from the company, the guy saying, uh, unfortunately, we can supply any part, but... As soon as parts are available, we're going to let you know, which is a bit strange because, I mean, if you keep making these scooters and selling them, you should have the part right there, you know what I'm saying? It's just that when you buy a scooter from, like, Kiwa, like, I just ordered this from Kiwa, and straight ahead, you know, I got the parts delivered today. So, 
Uh, then I emailed a guy out what was happening. I mean, is your company not in the system or something? Whatever. And then I, I didn't get any email. So my, my only, you know, imagination is that they might get in trouble because when I got this scooter, I was thinking it's one of those ones, you know, you're calling ultra, ultra, whatever it is, whatever fuck name that it gives those ones. They made them look similar like this, but they're not the same like what I got here. What I got here, everything here, even this throttle, it's not the same because when you go to the control and setting up this throttle, it's not the same like the one you see there, the one you see in some of the videos of Ultron Ultra or whatever the name is. And some of the scooters like looking similar, uh, similarity with this one I call Ultron Ultra. I realize that's why they don't have the C-shaped shock system or suspension system. They got a straight fork suspension right here, like the one the QR have here. That's, that's a kind of suspension they got on some of those scooters. Some of them have the same thing like this. It might look the same, but honestly, let me tell you that it's not the same because I have research about those people. Like, and I've even checked some of the specific, specification they put on the internet about those scooters, and they just kind of like differ. Some say that they're going about 60 kilometers, some say they're going about 90 kilometers, all this. So, man, all I'm gonna say, if you have any of those scooters or whichever you have, it's your choice of buy. You want to buy a scooter that you feel like, look, listen, I want to buy something. Make sure that whatever source you buy in the scooter, you investigate much about them, to know about people's review about them. Even maybe send some email, try to get some information about what sort of controller do you use and what sort of part you use before you even put your money in. Otherwise, you might be buying a scooter looking like this, but you might actually be riding a scooter, which is less three times the power of this. You don't want that, you know what I'm saying? All right. Now, when I made my video sometimes, uh, excuse me, I had to be of course, so my voice would be like, but, well, I had to do, I mean, I gotta do these videos because uh, it's information I want you all to know. When I made my video sometimes, you know, uh, a lot of people say that uh, it might be like, you know, a little bit, you know, longer, you know, why is it not short? But my purpose of videos are more tutorials, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to explain things as if like you go to school. I'm not trying to just like show you like, you know what, you pull this, you pull that, then I'm not helping you because not everybody uh, have the chance of getting things straight. Some people take time to understand what people are trying to say, you know what I'm saying? That's what I made my videos a little bit longer. So however long it is, just take your time and watch it and you might be getting exactly the information you needed. But if you just kind of like, you know, watch it two seconds and click it off, then you might be missing a lot of information. So without any more hesitation, I got a part right here. And what I'm going to do today is... I'm going to try to take this off and taking this off means I'm going to lose here and here to take this whole system off. There's so many ways to do it. Some people will just lose, lose that and take the whole thing out and lose it even. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to lose this one and that one to get this whole thing out and be careful of the hydraulic cable because the fluid is in there. So when you take this you gotta work with it so nice. Don't lose any of this, or you're gonna be leaking hydraulic fluid and you must start having breaking problem. Take this, make sure you work with it gently. And this thing right here, this this one right here, we're gonna pull it out. And once we pull it out, these two will just close into each other, and then they will drop. That's those are your brake uh, shoes right there. This is a brace you sitting in the calipers and the calipers are on the side just you know, pushing them together and this is the one that separate them so when you break the hydraulic fluid push the caliper the calipers push the brake shoes together so this serve as a spring in the middle for the brace shoes not to keep stuck so after you've done that the brace shoes go separate and go by by this small spring right there that's the purpose of that so that's what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to just put a phone somewhere that we can watch the video. And then, uh, yeah, we go ahead straight. So if I put it somewhere here, man, I don't have, I don't have space. So let, let me see if I put it somewhere here. Can we see? Well, something showing. So what I'm going to do is, you know, um, I'm going to try to just like uh, work around for you to see what I'm doing. If I need any more details, I may just bring the phone closer and show you what I'm doing. That's a better way to do it than to make your, to make your, I can actually even put it right here. But here you only gonna be saying that. So that's what we are gonna be doing. So first thing first, we got a box here. So let me just get something, cut this box out and see what's inside. <laughs> I 
I always got my crazy kitchen knife, but don't be scared. It's, it's not for anything. I already don't have any knife. I have tools, but you know, I don't keep my tools at home. They always in my car, so I'm just gonna use this kitchen knife. And uh, if it's sharp enough, we should be able to get through that and see what is inside this box. And I've ordered um, the brace shoe. What I did was, because I was having trouble getting the brace shoes from the actual company in South Korea, and that means that a man will be able to ride my scooter because you can't ride a scooter without, you know, a, a normal brake, especially not this scooter. This scooter is too fast. If you're riding something, maybe 20 miles or something, that you might just take a risk, maybe use your legs sometime to hit the floor to kind of like, you know, get your things going. But with this type of scooter, you want to be sure that everything is in touch. You don't want to take any two of my rigs. So that's the reason why I had to order mine. So what I'm doing today is a bit of like, you know, risk taking, but uh, well, a walk up little risk taking, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, the part for the QRQ power might not be compatible with uh, the actual one that I have here. But from what I've seen so far from the QRQ power and the one I have, they have a bit of similarity. So I just fall like, well, I'm going to take that risk and um, all that you can see. So inside, we have this and right, there's no brake shoes. We only send, oh, that's a bit strange. No, I'm going to say. Maybe it might be inside, I don't know. Actually, this is crazy because <laughs> I just realized something. Um, now, I actually order uh, eat one spare inner tube just for you know reason in case something happened. But then, what they did was oh, they did put a brake shoe. So what they did was they actually so that means I actually pay for a tire and an inner tube, which is actually very good. You know what I'm saying? I was thinking I was buying just the inner tube. I was ordering just the inner tube because uh, in my last video, I had got a puncture with this one and I don't want to take that risk because I ain't got no uh, spare inner tube. So I decided, uh, you know what, this, this tire right there and this one are all the same. So I decided to buy extra inner tube just to be around. So if I have any puncture, instead of me wasting my time, repair, and I'm just go, just change it, put this one in, and right ahead start riding my scooter and then repair the other one later. So when I order this, uh, the whole thing cost me uh, 100 and $118 or something. And I was thinking, I was because on the on the QR website, they put uh, they put on something like tire or tube. So I was thinking, is you already need a tire or tube, but you gotta make sure you tell them what you want. So I put it, I need an inner tube. And yeah, I got a tire and an inner tube, and the brake shoe might probably be inside of the floor. So that's actually good. That means I got one spare tire. Got one spare tire here. Yeah. Got one spare tire and an inner tube. And I think, yeah, this. So what they did was they put a brake here. I ordered two of those. So they actually put it in. So, I got everything. I was a bit scared, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when I got this, I was a bit like, you know, where are the brake shoes? Because I don't need the tire or the inner tube. The most important thing I need are uh, these brake shoes. Yeah, I'm gonna just show you all how the brake shoe is. So, this is what is gonna be saving your life. So, you got a brake shoes here, right here. I don't know if you can see, so they look like this. Now, the only thing is, if this, diameter here don't fit into the calipers in there then that means i am doomed there's nothing i can do the only thing i can maybe take it to one of those uh metal shops for them to grind around it to reduce the diameter that's the only way because as it stand right now i can't get a part for this scooter from the main company because i think they must stop producing this scooter or i don't know whatever happened i just can't get a part you know what i'm saying and then they got a spring as well. That's what goes in the middle. So you pull your brakes. This go in one side of the caliper. This goes in another side of the caliper. And then this stays in the middle. So when you brake, when you, they, they push, the hydraulic is going to push this 
to clip your your brake disc and once you release the brake the spring is going to push them apart so your your wheel can uh, spin free so well i uh, well i'm happy that i got this right now so i think that's good and with the qr as well i already have uh, the qrq hammer i already have um one a spare tire you know when i made that video about changing uh the back tire you know because i had a problem with the motor and the controller you know when i bought this qr new and i don't know the controller just keep going off so what happened is uh at the end i was planning to send this back but then you know it's gonna cost a lot of money for me to send it and it's gonna cost a lot of money for them so then the qr decided to set a complete set of tires so i got this whole tire with a motor complete with everything sent to me so all i did was just take the whole back tire off and put a new one which is this one so i had an old one with the old motor with the old inner tube in the air is inside in my store right there so if i have any problem in the future about tire or inner tube i can be happy that i got one tire because i can use that tire that that i had in the store to replace this one and the inner tube in that i can use it for this one or for that one and even the motor i might just be lucky if it's not a motor causing the problem i might even use that motor as a spare for this in the future so uh now what we're gonna do is we need just a basic simple tools for that but what happens sometimes is a lot of time you know some of these got really stuck and then you have to start thinking that maybe you need something else so i have this in my writing bag all the time now let's keep this in my riding bag. So all you're gonna be needing is uh, just a set of alarm keys and see which one goes in there. But before we do that, there's something else I want you all to know. Before you put in your calipers, because you adjusted your your braking system, you know, because the brake shoes are so worn out, they're not new like this one. The one we have now, you can see that it's got a lot on that. The one we have in there is not going to be like this. It's going to be probably you know, very thin to the other side. So that means when you adjust your brake with adjustable thing right there, turning it, push it all the way in, you push the liquid all the way down. So now the calipers are very close to each other. If you leave it like that, you are not going to be able to pull this in because you might be able to put one but the other one won't fit because there's no space so before you do that you're going to be adjusting that anti-clockwise to get that thing out with not getting out completely just lose it till it get to the point where you see that enough is, is coming out then that means that there's a space now between where the hydraulic fluid is to your calipers and here so the moment you start putting this into the calipers and push the calipers a little bit apart the fluid will just flow back, creating space for you to put your brake shoes in successfully. So that's what we're going to be doing. So, great, I got new tire, new inner tube. I'm going to just put this one back in a box here and put it in my store for future use. Because uh, they're the same tire. So if I got problem with this tire in the future, I'm going to just use this one. If I got problem with this tire in the future, I'm going to just use this one. And I have one inner tube now in there. So anything that happen, I'm going to just put this inner tube in and start riding once I repair this one. So I'm going to put this one right there. It's going to be going to the store later. We got this helmet off. Of course, you need this. Since I got this scooter, I know the speed of this scooter. So I always wear this. You need this safety is always first, man. You gotta wear this all the time when you are on this. With a QI, even I try to wear this sometimes because this can go as well. This what happens is that it doesn't pick quick like this. It pick slowly and then accelerate. This one just pick quick and start flying. So without that, don't even attempt. So first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking for the alarm key that fit that. It's gonna be one of these small ones. When we get a one that fit there, it's definitely gonna be one of them small ones. I don't think it's gonna be the very tiny one. Definitely gonna be this one. So we're gonna pull this out. We're gonna pull this. We're gonna pull this out slowly. 
to get that one out. You can put your leg on it, pull it out. So now it's totally out. Now it's totally out there. So what we're gonna do is stick that in, try to get it all in. Once we get it in, they say we just turn anti anti-clockwise. Turn anti-clockwise to release pressure on that hydraulic fluid. Well, usually you need two hands for this, but as I'm using one hand for the video, well, it's gonna take some time, but it does the process. So don't mind about how long the video is. It's more about what you're gonna get after watching the video. So uh, this is what we're gonna be doing. So, I mean, for the purpose of video, maybe I should just demonstrate, show you some few demonstration because I don't wanna, the video to be too long because people don't have time to watch long videos. So this this one's gonna be happening. So now this one we're gonna turn this one all the way out. You see? It start it start coming already. We're gonna turn this one all the way out. So that way the hydraulic fluid is gonna have space to flow back. We're gonna do the same for this. But one thing you gotta understand is if you're changing only the front uh, brake part, maybe your front brake part for some reason, you keep using the front brake more than the back brake, and then the front brake back when out. You don't need to adjust both of them. You adjust the one that you need to change the brake part for. But in this case, I'm going to be changing the brake part for both of them because both of them, they're really gone. So I'm going to be replacing the front brake part and the rear brake part. So for the purpose of this video, not taking too much time, you have to adjust this one you have to adjust that one to get it all the way up. Don't get it all the way out like you're gonna take it out now. Just adjust it to a level where you feel like there's enough clearance for the hydraulic fluid to flow back. Something when you do, when you adjust it a little bit out, just leave it like that. When you start putting your brake shoes and you start struggling that they're not going in to fit into the disc, then come back and adjust it a little bit more out just to create space. So that's, that's what we're gonna be doing with this and that. And then on this one right here, and make sure you keep all your brake things, you know, in the one place. Don't step on it, don't break it, because it's gonna take a lot of time for, to get this back. It's not too expensive. This is something about uh, a pair, it's about $38 or something, $38 for a pair or something. I don't even know how much I pay, but I pay $118 for this and the ties. So this one, we're gonna be needing one alarm key. We're gonna be losing this one, that one. When we lose this and that, this is gonna be free. So we're gonna be taking this out, but don't take it all the way out because you see this, this is all in. You, you're gonna be damaging this. So just take it out of the disc. Once it's free, you pull this out. Those two brake shoes should be dropping. And once they drop, they're gonna be dropping because that's how they sit. So they're just gonna drop down and the other one is gonna drop down as well. Once you take the spring out, they will drop down, you pick it, and then you insert this one into one side and push it, push it with a caliper in because the caliper is out now because the brake fluid is pushing the caliper in. So once this is in, push it all the way to the end of the caliper to create space. So when you're gonna put it back, the dick should be free to fit in. So that's how we're gonna be doing with this one. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, if I want to continue this video, it's going to be long. So I might just continue with, you know, if it's long, you know, those of you who have, you know, uh, time to watch it, watch it because some people, you know, sometimes, you know, people complain about things like maybe the video is too long or something. So that's why I'm just trying to see if, um, if I can make it a bit shorter so it's not too long. So with this one, we're almost done with this. So I'm going to just go ahead and say, I really want to pass all the information out how I'm doing this. So anybody doing this shouldn't struggle. I don't want to just, you know, cut it and then do it. And maybe somebody don't know how I do it. And they're going to be struggling. So, well, I can see from here, you can see from here how much thread is out. If you can see from here, that's a lot of thread out. So I'm gonna leave this one like this, and that is for the back. So once the back is done, now we can just come, put our alarm key in, we need to find the right size. Once you find the right size, you should sit in straight. 
well, okay, that's the right side. So we can lose it. It need to be oppression. Come on, I didn't cut up by it. You just lose it. And then you do the same with this as well. Put it in. Bit of bit of pressure. Yeah. You lose it. Then you can turn it this way now just for speed. Okay. Right. So you can see that this is all out. You put on one side. You do the same for this. That's out as well. Now you can see that your, your braking system is able to come out, you know, smoothly without any problem. So once this is out, just bring it on one side. Take this spring out. I, need, I really need my two hand on this, you know what I'm saying? I really need my two hand on this. And on that, they got something here, some washes. So don't forget some washes i think they they come with this bolt and uh, they come with this bolt right there and so don't forget one for each side take those washes and put them on one side it's another one here too so put them on one side so now you can see from here that's what we're talking about there that's how the whole thing is inside there so to get this i really need my two hand okay so you pull this out you see pull that out and slide this see one is falling already so that's the one brace you can say that uh the actually one uh, i don't know if the camera can pick that one look they actually very one see this is the new one see how the new one is and this is the one that is there so you can see that the very one this one is actually look this one is actually very close this one is actually very close look very one and they have a one you know uh symmetrically like you know uniformly so first thing i'm gonna do is to check and i'm right they're, they're about the same size so i'm right of buying so that means that i can buy this from qi anytime because it fit so that's it that's the old one so one is out you push the other the other one to from here yeah and it should drop down straight that's the second one the second one to wear off you know in a bit of like weird way because they just wear off like that leave it a top bit they should be wearing with the top bit, but they wear with the down and the top bit is there which is a bit strange but well you can see that there's, there's nothing there there's nothing there look especially this side it's almost flush so these brake shoes are badly worn you shouldn't even leave your brake shoes worn like this but i don't know the reason why you know they wear off and leave in the top and if i try to compare with a key one. I don't know. I think that one might just be a little bit wider than you know what it what it breaks. So okay, I don't wait without any problem. So what you do just blow some air. Normally, like you should be using like you know brake cleaners, you know, just to spray it to clean it, but well, I haven't got that, so just blow some air in. And you take your first new brake shoes, insert it in. In the hole there and make sure it comes out but here now i'll be needing my two hand because we're going to be pushing this back to push the caliper back so i'll need my hand now and probably a little bit of screwdriver and sometimes what is best to do as well is you can actually push the actual calipers out before so i'm gonna just take a small screwdriver which i think i'm gonna take two of them they all has to be flat. I got a big one and a small one, but I think I might be needing just a small one because this space there is not too big for for the big one. Now I'm gonna see if I can pull this phone here and do the work at the same time, so that way I can use my two hand. I'm gonna try as much as possible to stay, 
you know, out of the camera's view so you can see what I'm doing. Right. So, now that we have that, uh, okay, that's the only way I can say it. So, now I'm going to use the screwdriver to try to push this caliper in. Well, I need to make sure the calipers are well in. So, the first brake shoes go in, come out from there, and once it sit in, make sure that you sit in, once it sit in, then I'm gonna push, push that all the way back. Cause if it doesn't sit in, yeah. Push it all the way in, it's going out, keep pushing, keep pushing in, push it in and make sure it's all the way in. Back, that's the only way. It has to go all the way back. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get a second one in. So, put the second one Try to see the second one is gonna go in. Okay. Second one is going in. The problem you're gonna have now is that because second one and the first one is too tight, there's no space for, for the dig. So we'll put the second one back as well. Push it with the, you know, this thing to make sure there is enough space. So once we do that, we put a screwdriver in between those two and then remember we got a new spring so you're gonna put a spring in between to so leave the screwdriver in between those two and put your spring from the top just squeeze it and put it in between you can use the old one the old spring is here which is this one right there but after something i just fall like come on man you have new ones so you might just use the new one but you can keep this spring as when you finish, you can keep all this together. Just put it somewhere. You never know. You might have an emergency that you need any of those things. So that's clipping now. So now, if I bring the camera, well, to see, if I bring the camera now to see, we've inserted that. And that's how it looks after we've done that. So after we're done, we're going to put it back on the dicks. And don't forget, you got some wash washers here, you know, going up and down. You put them washers on. And then um, just put it back and you should be back in business. So still put a phone here. Just going to check if I'm catching something because I don't want to just... Right, it's not catching, so it has to be this way. Yeah. So, now that we have that, my foot is gonna be on the way, but it's the only way. So, just make sure, push the oil in completely. And see if we can put it back. So now it's back, and it's there. But the only thing is, when we put it, you have to check to be sure that it's actually inside the two brake shoes, not outside of it. If it's outside of it, then that's gonna be a problem. Okay. Take it out, check it again to be sure. Okay. Right. So now we know it's in. So what we're gonna be doing is So all that, all that we're gonna be doing, I don't want the video to be too long, is um, now that this is on, your washers are gonna go under this, and this sit on, and then your board is gonna go through, and you tie it, washers go under this one as well, 
the boot gonna go through you tie it then after that no you don't tie it fully because it's gonna be adjusting because when you start now uh, this is gonna be making so much noise because it's a new one so you have to adjust it to limit the noise a little bit but because the new brace shoes I have to wear a bit to create clearance you know what I'm saying so you are gonna hear some noise but when you take it right and after a few days the noise will disappear once it creates you know that space that this need needed to go even when the the old thing is not adjusted then that way you uh you will be okay what you do is when you fit all that and you try your brake and your brake is catching you know like catch like up to here not up to here and not so close to the steer don't adjust that because this is now gonna determine how much your the, the more you adjust this shows that your brake shoes are getting wet so this is now gonna be like the way it is and then you just keep adjusting over the month or how long is it gonna depend on how much you ride i've been riding this thing almost like for the past three months every single day i'm on this you know riding you know 50 55 60 miles or whatever it is just going up and down so maybe that's why my one i'll be so i'm gonna end this video here you know that's just to help you you know about information you need about this brake system and things like that and if you have any of this scooter and you're struggling being in the same situation and you don't know what what kind of parts you can get you can get similar parts from kiwa for some of this like you can get the, this small guard with the with a with a where you put your foot the suspensions they're the same as the kiwa one the braid these are going to be the same the brake system with the calipers and everything are going to be the same so i think some of those you can get it even i believe like you know the kiwa has another motor and Akiwa Keeper has another scooter that got 3200 watt just like this one so that means that you can literally get everything you see that even the Kiwa tire fit so most of this you can get some of this part from Kiwa if you're struggling to get a part from you know the actual company you know what I'm saying so oh uh, well I hope this video helped you out I'm trying to do my best you know what I'm saying just like you know trying to make videos about you know what you can you know face when you have scooters and how to address this problem without any cause of alarm so uh you all give shout out to my videos you know subscribe to my channels you know uh you know just encourage people view my videos and people to subscribe to my channels and then it motivate me to do more videos so i'm gonna continue now doing what i said i'm gonna be doing and after i'm gonna take this scooter on uh on the right and to be honest i mean everything should be fine uh because we got all the power here so yeah that's it so well, shout out to all of you. Have a good day. And until I do my next video, you all take care of yourself. Bye.